of Lent. Now, I've been going around telling everybody that Rick Warren's uh, purpose, Porpoise Driven Life, 40 Days of Purpose, was based upon the season of Lent and the 40 days. That's what I knew about it. I didn't know. I didn't know that Lent actually lasts longer than 40 days. It starts with Ash Wednesday. Let's see, Ash Wednesday. The day on Wednesday where you go to the Roman Catholic Church and they take the ashes of things that have been burnt and they put, oh look, they're putting an X chromosome on people's heads here. Hmm, imagine that. And Ash Wednesday leads up to Easter Sunday. Now, this is all about the death and the resurrection or the, the giving of life again. Let me read this to you from the Bible. So you think, well, you know, it's talking about Jesus? No. It's not, and I'm going to show you that. Revelation chapter thir uh, 13 here. Let me get in the right place. Um, the beast which I saw was likened to a, a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Remember JFK? Where was he wounded at? Where are they putting this ash on here? Uh, and his deadly wound was healed all throughout Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma and all throughout Dan Brown's Lost Symbol. They're talking about the death and the resurrection uh, of the lost symbol, the lost word of Freemasonry, the Antichrist, Osiris, um, Bacchus, Apollyon, Hermes, Trismegistus. All of these are emblems of the Antichrist. And I'm telling it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to figure out that the Roman Catholic Church is all about bringing in the work of the Antichrist in the last days, including the mother of all harlots, Mystery Babylon, uh, herself. And so I want you to think about this. So here we have Ash Wednesday, and f exactly 46 days later, you have Easter Sunday where we have the resurrection. Listen to this article uh, concerning, the article says, where does the Catholic Ash Wednesday originate from? Uh, this says, every Catholic in the world knows what Ash Wednesday it is. The Wednesday after uh, Quinquagesima Sunday. Uh, boy, I, I never read that one before. Uh, which is the first day of the Lenten fast. This is the day when Catholics put ash on their forehead as a religious tradition. The question is, how many devoted Catholics really know the real story behind Ash Wednesday? How many, um, how many know that this tradition it has clear pagan roots? Um, it, Ash Wednesday, was taken from Roman paganism, which took it from Vedic India. Ashes were called the seed of the fire god Agni. Hmm. Think about it. The seed of the god with power to forgive sins. Ashes were, said, uh, ashes were said to be a symbol for the purifying blood of Shiva in which one could bathe away sins. During Rome's New Year Feast of Atonement in March, people wore sackcloth and bathed in ashes to atone for their sins as the dying god of March, Mars, took his worshippers' sins with him into death. The carnival fell on Dies Martis, the day of Mars. In English, this day was Tuesday. Hence, we get the word Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday, because Mars was identified with the Saxon god Tew. In French, the carnival day was Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday, the day of merrymaking before Ash Wednesday. Ashes are the residue... Now, watch, listen to this. Ashes are the residue of fire, and just as fire is regarded in mythology and folklore as something which purifies and also regenerates or brings new life, so the same properties are associated within the ashes. So I'm going to let you get this imagery here of ashes, something, something after 46 days rising up out of the ashes. And that's where you get the symbol of the phoenix. The phoenix is a mythical bird. It is the phoenix is the <coughs> essential um, identifying mark of the Antichrist. The, the phoenix is the Antichrist. This bird rising up, uh, being killed and destroyed in fire. That's where the beast is right now. He's in the bottomless pit. He's in hell. And he's going to rise up out of his own ashes into resurrection. And all of this happens in a period of 46 days. I'm interested to see what's going to come of these two earthquakes in Haiti and in Chile concerning the rising of the Antichrist or the bringing in of a new world order. I am interested to see what's going to happen. Here's a quote, a page actually, out of uh, Alexander Hislop's The Two Babylons, and he's talking about the pagan feast of Lent. 
He says, it is highly probable that the 40 days fast of Lent was made in later times to have reference to both. Among the pagans, this Lent seems to have been an indispensable preliminary to the great annual festival in commemoration of the death and resurrection of Tammuz, which was celebrated by alternate weeping and rejoicing, and which in many countries was considerably later than the Christian festival being observed in Palestine and Assyria in June, therefore called the month of Tammuz in Egypt. This is the name that actually shows up in your King James Bible. Remember God is taking Ezekiel all through the... Um, He's taking him through the, the, uh, the temple area. And he's showing him the abominations that are... Listen to this now. This is good. He's showing him the abominations that are going on inside of the organized religion of the country. Boy, can't we see that taking place right now. And I'm telling you people, the organizations, the denominations, the ministries of which we used to be a part of, they are growing more corrupt every day. And, and the higher up the ladder you go, this is what you see. But at some point, God takes Ezekiel and he says, I want to show you this. In chapter 8, verse 13, he said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Undoubtedly had a little X chromosome in ash sprinkled upon their forehead. Now, again, I'm going to say this. It remains to be seen. I believe in patterns. I, when, uh, God nudged me on this saying, and I'm not saying this is thus saith the Lord. I may, I may be an idiot for bringing this up, but I think I see a pattern here. And I think it remains to be seen what is going to follow next as a result of this. But I wanted you to be aware. I think that we're living in interesting times. And when it comes to earthquakes, here's what the Bible says, Matthew 27, verse 50. Jesus said, when he had cried again with a loud voice and yielded up the ghost, uh, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose. I will tell you, I believe in the symbols and the stories and the types and the figures in the Bible. I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I believe in the resurrection of you and I. If we die before we're translated into heaven, I believe that we'll be resurrected. But I also believe in the resurrection of the beast in the last days. And I think, I think, according to the things given to us in the scriptures, I think that it's going to be accompanied by earthquakes. Certainly, this is starting to make sense to me. Remember when we talked about Joel's army and a few broadcasts that we talked about the whole Joel's army thing and how Joel's army really wasn't all these super Christians that were better than everybody. It was actually this, this demonic league that comes out of the bottomless pit. Joel chapter 2 verse 9. They shall run to and fro in the city and they shall run upon the wall and they shall climb upon the houses and they shall enter in at the windows like a thief or like politicians and the earth shall quake before them. In other words, the earthquakes are going to take place first, and then Joel's army. Uh, the earth shall quake before them, and the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Go back to read Matthew chapter 24. You're going to find the exact same there. Go read, uh, go read Acts chapter 2. Go read other places in the Bible where the sun is darkened, and the moon does not give her light, and then the stars fall. We're talking, I believe, about the same event. Revelation chapter 6, And I beheld, and when he had opened the sixth seal, the number six, very important here, lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as a sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken up a mind.